Hi, my name is Samantha Robler, and I'm a freshman at Lincoln High School. And this poem is called, My Child Should Be Born with a Stutter. I am a person who stutters, and according to current hypotheses drawn up in pristine labs, exact calculations making science of the way I speak, there is an 80% chance that my future child will also be a person who stutters. An 80% chance that this one thread of DNA floating around in my genetic makeup will be delicately woven into intricate tapestries of my child's personal dialect, heredity taking fate into its own hands. An 80% chance that my child's tongue will get caught up against the roof of their mouth. No, the cow won't have gone in their tongue this time. It will be their own vocal cords, holding their inspiration hostage. An 80% chance that my child's words will be standing on the ledge of their tongue, a baby bird, probably a month old, ready to fly. But something holds it back. Thousands of years of, of evolution telling them that they'll soar with that one voice in the back of their mind, saying that they'll fall, it's enough to keep anyone from trying. I have felt and I have dealt with all these things and more, and if one day my ear picks up four syllables getting caught between my child's clenched teeth, if one day my child's head is tilting backwards as the words come out chopped, if one day soccer moms in the playground are asking me if I drank while I was pregnant, birth defects have been on the rise after all, they'll say that they'll grow out of it. I don't care if they grow out of it. A speech impediment is not a childhood habit. They'll grow out of sucking their own thumb. They won't need to grow out of speaking with their own voice. It can be cured, they'll say. They'll save your cures for those who need them. Stuttering is not a terminal illness. Our voice, our gift sent from God. If you give us time to finish our own sentences, then maybe you'd see we just aren't as flawed as you might believe. If one day my child's spirits are as low as mine once were before, I will drown their insecurities, my certainties, their abilities. My home will be sanctuary for my child. It's okay to pray out loud, baby. God won't mind hearing what you have to say just a few times over again. And even if the world around them doesn't have the courage to stare into the eyes of confidence, that child of mine will know that their voice has meaning, importance, and yes. That voice of theirs may come chopped up in bits and pieces, but I will cherish each bit and each piece that they will give me. Because even the world's most precious stones shine brightest ones chopped, chopped, chopped away from the dull rock around them. I want the words to fly out of their mouth. Because even that baby bird standing on the ledge of that tree, sometimes needs just a little push from their mama. I will be there for my child when they are ready to put those thousands of precious stone words out into the world in use of anyone who will listen. Dear God, just let them listen. What I want for my child, whether he or she stutters or is society's perfect concept of fluency, I want them to love their words, just like their mother had to learn to.